Hey everybody, it's me, Ned. Uh, I've got 2016 Contadino here. My allocation this year was like half what it normally would be. Um, this 2016 was the winter that I went and ran around eastern Sicily, ran over Mount Etna, stayed with Frank Cornelis, and um, it was February and it was like 60 degrees while I was there. It was super warm. Everybody was really worried that bud break was going to happen in, in February. So I can only imagine that it kind of like kept on like that. I think it was a very hot vintage, um, which meant that in the end yields were pretty small. But the wine came out awesome. I um, It's got a lot of fruit to it. It smells like there's all kinds of like black cherries, raspberry, wood smoke, charcoal, uh, aromatic herbs, uh, up on, I mean, around Sicily, but up on Etna, there's a ton of crazy things growing. There's all kinds of aromatic, uh, plants. Like, fennel just grows like a weed. Like, it grows out of cracks in the pavement. It's everywhere. So there's, there's a really cool aromatic, like, spice kind of, like, woven into the aroma here. It's really juicy, and by juicy, it's both like juicy in a thirst quenching way, uh, and also juicy in a like. There's a lot of ripe, dark cherry, and like black raspberry fruit, and cranberry to this. Um, it's interesting. The 2016 is more powerful, it's riper tasting to me than the 2015 was. The 2015 was a little bit brighter, which people liked. It was cool, but it was lighter and a little simpler. Compared to the 2014, the 2014 was definitely riper and heavier. The 14 was higher alcohol than this. This is 13 and a half. I want to say the 14 was 14% 14 alcohol, maybe 14 and a half. But the 14 was definitely like more alcohol, more power, a little bit more tannin. Um, this, the 2016, kind of splits the difference of the two, which is really cool. Like, this tastes more precise, definitely, than the 2014 was. Um, oh, man, I want to say... Oh, geez, I forget which one. I think maybe the 2015 was the first vintage that Frank made in his new winery. <clears throat> um, but this definitely... Like, it tastes like Mount Etna. It's, it's driven by the fruit and, like, the volcanic. There's a, a smokiness on the mid-palate here, this minerality that, to me, is volcanic. Like, it's lava, it's volcanic basalt. doesn't matter, you know, if you've never gone to Mount Etna and eaten a bunch of sand and grit and stuff like that to taste it. doesn't matter. But when you taste this... Uh, in the mid palate, like there is just this really dark, almost brooding, minerally quality that's really awesome. It's not that tannic. The wine is driven by its fruit, its acidity, and that like smoky minerality. Um, the tan there's tannins there, but they're um, they're supporting actors to those other components of the wine. Um, this is fantastic. Uh, I really, you know, I knew I was disappointed that I hadn't gotten more of it, but now I'm even more disappointed that I hadn't gotten more of it. Um, what's cool about this is that it's kind of brooding and powerful and at the same time, like, bright and fun and friendly um, and thirst quenching. Somehow it does, it does both. Like, the technically how it drinks is bright and fresh, but then some of those flavors are really, like, dark and brooding which pretty much sums up Mount Etna. <laughs> it is a beautiful, amazing, tropical paradise that might erupt and kill you at any moment. Um, yeah, super cool. I love juxtapositions like that. This is great and really rare. If you want some, uh, go talk to people, order some from a retail shop, because there's just so little of this to go around. Um, but I have a ton of other wines from Mount Etna from Sicily because I have a soft spot for it. So. Hit me up.